Hi, my name's Colin. I'm from Stockport in the UK and today I'd like you to join me in painting this watercolour. Okay, to start this picture we'll just mix up some uh, very simple colour washes. This is just plain cadmium red. And I'm just adding it to some clean water. And some cobalt blue. Just a touch of ultramarine, just to darken it slightly. This is aurelian, but you can use cadmium yellow. It's a strong colour, very strong colour. And the last one is a lizard and crimson. So there's your washes. These are the other colours you'll need. This is yellow ochre and I've just added a little bit of water to the trays. You'll need a cloud mixture, ultramarine, plus burnt umber, which is some alizarin crimson, for the rocks, Sienna. Also with some burnt umber, just left on the side. Then you have ultramarine, the burnt umber. And those are the main colours that we will be using. Okay, this paper has been pre stretched in some water, and I'm just going to take the excess water from it. Just dry out an area of the sea. First of all, just apply the cadmium red. So, just let that down with a little bit of water. Take it into that. Cadmium yellow or aurelian as I'm using here. Bring it into the cadmium red so it creates an orange. Strengthen it there at the top. Just a touch more. Into that. It's a straight wash of alizarin crimson. From that, it's just a mixture of cobalt blue and ultramarine. Just touch that into the red. For the shine to disappear and then we can add the clouds. Just taking out some colour. <coughs> Whilst the sky is nearly dry, we'll just add some of the sea in. So take some of the aurelian mixture that you used for your sky. Pull most of it off so it's just a damp brush. And pull it across. You need to strengthen that slightly so you can see it better. And allow the paint to break. Then into that, drop in a stronger mix of the alizarin crimson. Catastrophe goes over your rocks. And then you can add the same mixture you use for your sky. Pull that in as well, just another little band of aurelian, just strengthen that up and into that is your cobalt blue, an ultramarine mixture, just a little to strengthen that up, and even if you touch the yellow and it makes green, it doesn't matter, take the excess run backs from the colour. Now the sky is still just a little bit wet, so we'll have to leave it to dry a bit longer. Okay, the sky area is dried up enough, so we can add the mixtures for the clouds, which is the ultramarine, burnt umber 
and the alizarin crimson and because the paper is still damp these clouds will soften just pat them in in random shapes as they come further towards the shoreline or the distance they get smaller and fainter and strengthen it up in some areas this will give your clouds some shape and some form and allow that to dry once that has dried you can re-wet this peninsula now taking your sky mixture you can tap this in keeping roughly the shape along here drop some yellow ochre in if you haven't got yellow ochre, raw sienna will do the trick. To the hills. It's a kitchen towel. Just to stop it drifting too far. And then you can allow this to dry. Once you've allowed that to dry, you can just re-wet these areas again. And what we're going to do is just strengthen up some of the hills. And pull in the direction that the hills are flowing and if you soften at the bottom with a damp brush you stake your house at the bottom just a lighter mixture more water you can add a chimney one there and allow that to dry once the headland is dry we'll fill this one which is closer to us in here. Take your paint to the top. Let it flood down. Give it a little bit of shape. Soften it off at the bottom. Take some paint out there. Drop in some raw sienna. This just adds a little bit of variation. And you can come back to the sea area and re wet the whole area everywhere. And with that, just strengthen it up. This is the cadmium red, which has had time to thicken. touch of the aurelian or you can use cadmium yellow we touch it in to the red just to soften it and right at the bottom we have the cobalt blue and ultramarine and just allow all that to come together allow that to dry just remove that. Next we're going to mix up a glazing colour which will be alizarin crimson. Now this well is full of clean water and I'm using the mix we had before when we started the painting. Adding that to the water with maybe just a touch of ultramarine just to darken it. 
I'm going to mix up a really dark colour. This is indigo. With a burnt umber. And this will restate your clouds. Just a touch of uh, olive and crimson and it's all united. Okay, here comes your bravery test. A half inch flat brush. Pick up your alizarin crimson ultramarine mix and wash it clean across the sky. Might have to be a little bit darker. There we go. Bring it down over the red. Just touching the yellow. <coughs> Do the same thing with the C. Do it in as few strokes as you can whilst that wash is still wet. Just soften the edge off with a damp brush. That way you won't see any hard transition lines. Now whilst this is still wet with your mixture of indigo, ultramarine, sorry, indigo, alizarin crimson and burnt umber, this is where your real dark clouds come in. And because there's paint underneath the glaze, this will spread very slowly. And this will help to re-emphasize your clouds that are underneath. Not everywhere, just, just enough to add depth. Touching the corner. So we'll build that one from the corner there. And softening off all the time. board around softening up the areas and then allow that to dry okay now it's time to paint the rocks so we'll set off with a little bit of yellow ochre add burnt sienna, a bit of burnt umber, working it into the paper and to that is the burnt umber and ultramarine. They're all mixed together. So having painted your colours on, which with your yellow ochre, your burnt sienna, your raw umber and your ultramarine and burnt umber, we're just going to lift some of the colour out to suggest shape. Being in your brush. Get to leave your shadows in on the shadow side. if you wish to just re darken some areas this will help to make it stand out and you can allow that to dry okay once that section has dried a little bit add some yellow ochre to this rocky side, some burnt sienna, some 
burn umber into that because you burn umber and ultramarine allow that all to mingle together Once you have that on the paper, you can start to lift some out. You can spend a bit of time doing this. Tries to create some unusual shapes if you can. Bring some darks back into some areas. Just to re-emphasize the cracks and the shape of the rocks. And whilst all this is still wet, we'll soften off. everything. Take a damp piece of kitchen towel, just straighten some areas up, making some patches just a tiny bit lighter. Try not to drag, just very gently press in. And now that we've just got it to this stage, we'll run some water up under the hills and we'll create a reflection a little bit here just with a touch of this sky colour just test it first gently down, allow this to drift, it's the same sky colour, just put in a little variation. You don't have to be too accurate. Just the odd dark area. Soften it off. Allow that to dry. Once everything is dry, we can now add ripples to the water with a, a flat brush. And it's just the same mixture that you use for the sky, just added water to it. Just test the strength. This is just to add movement to your water.
as you come closer down you can add a little bit more crimping to it make it slightly stronger okay, I'll stop the film there and finish it off due to time one last thing to do is just to add some sparkle lines with a craft knife and just scratch try not to overdo this it can get a bit addictive and it just adds some sparkle back to the water creating interest you'll have to decide how many you want to put on and all you have to do is add some seagulls sign it frame it I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching